Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, thanks for stopping by on today's video. St. Barbara's Day, our patron saint of the artillery and explosives, engineers, etc. Unfortunately this video is a little late to St. Barbara's Day celebration and things have changed a little bit with COVID-19 and normally I would celebrate this in person with my battery and the regiment uh, of the Royal Canadian Artillery, but things have changed and fantastically our local regiment that I am part of with the reserves has um, a very well-made video that's been produced by one of our officers in our regiment of what St. Barbara's Day is, what she was or who she was, and the situation she was involved in in becoming a saint. And there is no video that I've seen out there right now that is as fun, as an simplistic and enjoyable than the one that was produced. In no way, shape or form is this video credited to me. It is credited to the officer who produced this content in my local regiment and battery. Thank you, sir. I had an absolute blast watching this. I know most of you will too. And everyone else in our battery also had a really good time watching it. Standing ovation for you, sir. Credit goes to you. Of course, I'm not going to mention names in this video because it is not my place. But well done to you. I absolutely love this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. The story of St. Barbara's Day. Us gunners gather every December to share a pint and humbly remember that back in the day when guns first appeared, amidst all the swords and horses and spears, that we were not civil, but rather were brutes. For along with our cannons and ammo and boots, we kept wagons of ladies and powder arcane. Our offspring were many, and so they were named Son of a Gun. For none could know whether little Jimmy was sired by John, Bob, or Joe. So a scheme was devised to bring us civility, and curb the gunner's wanton fertility. It was entrusted to us by the papal father to keep the feast of the blessed St. Barbara. Our story begins, as most stories do, with a nasty old man who was well-to-do, a pagan of pagans, the man Dioscorus. His temper was like a Tyrannosaurus. Yet he had a daughter, most wise, most gracious, but also beautiful and vivacious. But there was a problem with this beautiful daughter that created some conflict with her dear father. Dioscorus' scheme was to find her a mate to one of his clients with wealthy estates. But beautiful Barbara did not want to marry, an idea that was quite revolutionary. She declared that she was devoted to God. So, to prevent anyone from touching her bod, her father built her a magnificent tower, in which Barbara would be safe at every hour. But Barbara had plans to alter the tower, and so directed the workers from out of her bower to install some windows, their number three, to remember the blessed Trinity. At this Dioscorus was not at all pleased. He clenched his fists and made a decree. Towers must only have windows of two. That is what pagans always must do. But a tower of one and windows of three... This professes Christianity. I will not have it. This I forbid, and any detractors should be made dead. And so Dioscorus drew out his sword. It should be plain now that he hated the Lord. He cornered St. Barbara and asked her quite plain if she was a Christian, and she admitted the same. But before he could slay her, Barbara prayed, and the good Lord teleported her far away. She was found with some shepherds in a field nearby, but one of those shepherds was a right nasty guy. This rotten shepherd committed betrayal, and so Barbara was seized and thrown into jail. But the good Lord saw this from atop of his throne, and turned that bad shepherd into a statue of stone. And as for his flock, which was so trim and proper, well, those sheep were all turned into grasshoppers. Despite this great sign, her dad gave no heed, determined to commit a most terrible deed. Poor Barbara was tortured day in and day out. But a strange thing occurred. An odd thing came about. Barbara by night was left all bruised and scarred. Her skin was burnt, and her hair was charred. But come morning, she looked brand new. The head that was burnt had a splendid hairdo. She hadn't a scratch, no, not a one. The torture she suffered had all been undone. Her father, to prevent this miracle from spreading, sentenced his daughter to death by beheading. 
While the prison guards firmly took hold of her, Dioscorus himself chopped her head off her shoulder. As Barbara's head rolled round the room, the good Lord above, he steamed and he fumed. Then the Almighty fired his heavenly mortars, which rained down upon that damned Dioscorus. He was blown to bits by the wrath of heaven, like an Excalibur round from an M777. And this is why gunners remember St. Barbara's Day on the 4th of December. Though we gunners are no cloistered nuns, by the grace of St. Barbara, we celebrate the guns.